What's going on, YouTube? We are back for a fourth consecutive day on the Padres Wrap-Up Show. John Schaefer, Jim Russell, if you like our videos, thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. If you want more of these videos, exclusive content, we're going to keep this for free. We want to keep it for free, so subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below as we'll give you content throughout the end of this 2021 season into the offseason. So many decisions, Jim, and let's get right to it. I mean, I think one of the big questions is should Jace Tingler return as manager in 2022, I think there's reasons why he should, obviously, based on what happened last year, getting this team to the postseason. There's reasons why he shouldn't, based on what's going on this year, the complete collapse in the second half of the year. So what do you think? Should he or will he be back next year? I don't know how he can come back. I just I just don't see how after what has happened this year with the expectation that this team has had, I don't see how he can return. And not only that, like the reports that have come out about this team and players wanting a leader as a manager and Jace Tingler's not that guy. And, you know, that alone to me signals it's time for a new manager, even though it's only been a year and a half with Jace Tingler. When those reports start coming out, when you start hearing players, anonymous players say that they don't feel like Jace Tingler is a leader in that clubhouse and that they don't feel like he's the guy to lead them to a World Series, then it's time to go. It's just, that's, I'm sorry, there's no other way around it, even though I'm sure he's a great guy, would love to have some beers with him, nicest guy in the world. (laughs) But at the same time, once you lose the, the clubhouse, the players, it's, you're done. It's over. And the record also doesn't help either with what they've done the last two months. Do you think last Saturday night has anything to do with it? He gets ejected, of course, after the ejection. Publicly, it's a big moment. Nationally, it's on television. Uh, Fernando and Machado, you know, face-to-face, screaming match, later apologizing and recognizing that it's a part of the sport, but it probably should have happened behind the scenes. Is what happened Saturday night at all reflective on the job that Jace Tingler has done as a manager these last two months? You could say yes and no. I, I... I don't think it's a huge thing, but at the same time, you know, you do see like Britt Giroli talk to Manny Machado and she's close with Manny Machado. She talked in LA with him for like over a couple hours. And her biggest takeaway from that moment Saturday night was if there was a manager there that like was a Buck Showalter or Bruce Bochy, they would have never let it come to that. Now, Jace Tingler did get thrown out of that game, so he didn't have a chance to go break it up or get in the middle or you know talk to them before it turned into that yelling match. But I just I, I don't I don't know if Saturday night was like the breaking point as far as like Jace Tingler's leadership goes. Um, I think it's been a cumulative over the last two years of you know not backing up Fernando Tatis Jr. last year after three zero pitch. Um, the 16 inning game this year, the collapse, the Manny Machado and the Fernando Tatis uh, flare up in the dugout, like, and then the pitching decisions and the bullpen decisions and the lineup just construction and the way that uh, Eric Hosmer was dealt with during the trade deadline and before the trade deadline, pretty much being a platoon player. It, it goes into all of that and also being of one mind with AJ Preller. Yep. In the front office. Yeah. Here, here's the other thing I'll say. And we've said this a lot on the iHeartRadio app on Extra 1360. And by the way, we do the wrap-up show as well on Extra. If you have the iHeartRadio app, download it. Search for the wrap-up show with John Schaefer and Jim Russell. Um, what we've said a lot is that if you got rid of your manager in 2019 for a team quitting like they did and they had nothing to play for and you parted ways with Andy Green, then how on earth – Can you excuse what's happened in 2021? You had so much more to play for. Your payroll has literally been doubled from 2019 until 2021. You were in a wild card lead for the better part of the entire season. You approached July 30th as if you were adding to your team. Now, you could argue if they really did that or not. I mean, clearly, they didn't address the biggest needs. Even if it wasn't Max Scherzer, they didn't address their biggest needs. But coming out of July 30th, a lot of people felt better. They thought that Adam Frazier was a good addition. They thought Daniel Hudson would help. Yet from July 30th on, the thing is a complete train wreck. In fact, the Padres have an identical record in their last 37 games, 36 or 37 games, to the final 
36 or 37 games in 2019, and that cost Andy Green his job. So if it cost Andy Green his job and you have the same front office in place, and that was the criteria two years ago, why would it change in 2021 when the window is now open for you to win? That doesn't make any sense, does it? No, and it shouldn't change because, if anything, there is so much expectation with this club that if those expectations aren't met, then you can't just keep rolling the same thing out there over and over again. And yes, it's only been technically a full one year with Jace Tingler, but this wasn't just an average year. This was the worst collapse in the most disappointing season in Padres franchise history. I, I just don't see any other way around not saying those things that it was the worst collapse in Padres franchise history. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I think there's no other real way to say it. You you wonder what would be different if they had a veteran manager, and we don't know the answer to that. What would be different if they had a different coaching staff? We talked about this yesterday on Extra 1360. If the Padres had the Giants coaching staff in 2021, what would the record be? Because the Giants, to most people's most people believe the Giants roster isn't as talented as the Padres roster, yet the Giants have 99 wins this year. The Padres are 77 and 75. So if it's as simple as having having veteran leadership or a change of voice or a different coaching staff, well, you could argue that this Padres team could get better very quickly. I think you and I both agree, though. It's not just that. If A.J. Preller is at the helm, making all decisions, 40-man, 26-man roster, managerial and coaching staff, we don't fully know what changes are really going to happen on field, but I, I do think it starts at the very least. When you talk about organizational reckonings, like Dennis Linda said, at the very least, it's got to start probably with a change of manager. And by the way, that's not necessarily a reckoning, but if you change a lot of the coaching staff, if you move Eric Hosmer or Will Myers this offseason, if you bring in a general manager, now you're talking about a large number of changes that potentially impacts the, the Padres positively in 2022. And they, they need to, I mean, 2022 is not a waste year. 2022 no. is a year where you need to get back to the postseason, and that's the only expectation for next year. Right. And if you are seriously, truly committed to the one goal of winning a World Series, I just don't know how you can bring back Jace Tingler. Because to bring him back means this year didn't, uh, the collapse doesn't really mean much, you know, like there has to be some type of consequence for this collapse this year. I just don't see how you can't have a consequence with the manager and a major change in the front office um, because it just didn't work. It just didn't work. And if you want to throw back out there and try it again, like, okay, fine. But what gives anybody faith that doing the same thing again, pretty much with just, new players or a couple new coaches is going to really change anything. I, I agree with you. And here's the other thing. And I heard, um, I think Darren was saying it yesterday on extra 1360 and the Darren Smith show that, yeah, even if there is an expectation that a general manager is brought on board, there's no reason to think at least right now that that GM comes from the outside. So while AJ Pro has been elevated to the president of baseball operations and he still holds the title of GM, even if he sheds that title and gives it elsewhere, it might be internal. And that's not really, you know, no knock on anyone that's in the organization right now, not to say that their voice wouldn't be better potentially in that role, but if they all report up to AJ Preller, they don't really have an opportunity to excel in that spot. I think if they are bringing in a general manager, it's gotta be a fresh voice, and it's gotta be someone that's on somewhat of an equal footing with Preller when it comes to baseball decisions. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. They extended AJ Preller through 2026. They promoted A.J. Preller. But you got to get another significant voice in the room on baseball decisions if you do that and couple him with a new manager. And if you give the manager more say, if you bring in a veteran guy like a Washington or a Bochi and you allow them to take on more of lineup construction and have more of a role when it comes to how to use your bullpen, uh, how deep starters can work into games, then I think you could see some, some real changes. But – if it's just more of the same, and you've been saying it on social media, if you're just shuffling the deck, so to speak, then why would you expect different results? Exactly. And it's going to be so fascinating to see, all right, Jace Tingler's gone. This is, he's done. Let's just throw him out right now. We know the pattern of A.J. Preller. 
he wants a guy he can control. Andy Green, Jace Tingler, like that's his pattern. Pat Murphy, that wasn't really like a full hire. Like that was in season type of thing. Dave Roberts managed for one game. Rod Barajas was the yep. interim manager, uh, you know, after Andy Green. So he wants a guy who he can control pretty much, essentially. Is that Bruce Bochy? No. <laughs> Is that Buck Showalter? No. Is that even Ron Washington? I, I don't think so. Maybe just because they have ties from the Rangers organization. But that's the problem with wanting a veteran manager is that if they get a veteran manager, is that manager going to work well with AJ Preller? And is, it, is AJ Preller going to work well with a veteran manager who wants to have their own voice, who has their own voice, and also is probably coming here with a pretty good resume? This is not another first time guy. Whatever no. happens, you know, this is not going to be like that. This is not going to be Jace Tingler. It's not going to be Andy Green. So that relationship is extremely important to the success of this franchise, your GM and your manager. And yes, AJ Preller and Jace Tingler have a really good relationship right now, but it's not working because it kind of feels like the players view Jace Tingler as a clear extension of AJ Preller and what AJ Preller tried to do with the trade deadline, trying to trade Eric Cosmer, they lost that trust. So now you lost the trust of your manager. Well, you got to ask yourself one question, and you you mentioned earlier, are you in a position to win a World Series with the front office and coaching staff constructed no. the way it is right now or not? And if the answer no, to that is no, or if you don't believe that the answer is yes, you need to make a change. I also find this interesting. Ron Washington's in town this weekend. AJ Preller has the relationship with Washington. Atlanta is here. Atlanta's yeah. played good baseball. What's also interesting is the Padres actually could knock Atlanta out of the postseason with a couple of good games. Remember, there's the suspended game that the Padres already lead. Here's another thing to consider as I kind of take this down a different path for a moment. If the Padres beat up on Atlanta this weekend, big if, big if. Giant if. That, that could propel the Phillies into the postseason, which is giving Bryce Harper the MVP. The Phillies are two games back entering this weekend. However, if the Braves play good baseball, the Braves could lock up, again, the NL East, could keep the Phillies at bay, and could give Fernando Tatis Jr. a better shot at that MVP. But I just will say this. Ron Washington is in town this weekend for the next few days. Yeah. If they want to have a conversation, I don't know what the etiquette or protocol is there, but if I you have you a can. previous relationship, I mean, can you can you pick up the phone or can you mm, – does that conversation – it probably has to wait until after the year. Yeah, you can't do that as long as Jace Tingler is still the manager. Like, you, <laughs> you can't hey, just Jace. go – <laughs> you can talk to, to Ron Washington while Jace Tingler is managing uh, your ball club. Like it just, it just that that can't happen. It, you don't expect old... the week the weekend change like uh, like in 2019 <laughs> when Andy Green was out. No, and, and... <laughs> no I, Jace is is seeing this thing through until the end of the season. Um, but it, it it's going to be interesting because of that relationship with Jace Tingler and Preller. This is not like Andy Green and Preller. There was a clear crack in that relationship we all knew it not with tingler and preller so to just think it's going to be easy for jace tingler to fire or excuse me aj preller to fire jace tingler that's not going to be easy we've heard him tell marty that he expects and hopes that jace tingler's here for like a decade a decade manager you think that with, that was like a month and a half ago in a month and a half it's just going to be easy for him to fire Jace Tingler. Well, it might it might not be easy, but that's the job that he's tasked with. Um, when right. you're the president of baseball operations and your on-field isn't going the way it's supposed to go, and when a team that was supposed to win 98 games, according to fan graphs, is heading for an 80-win season, these are the decisions you need to make, and this is why you're in your position. It's not if friendship's got to be secondarily. This this you're is right. professional first, personal second, and unfortunately, he kind of put himself in this spot. Ron Fowler, when he was representing ownership in 2019, said experience was a very critical component of the hire. But he he allowed A.J. Preller to make the decision. I don't know if it was unilaterally or not, but he hired a first-time manager. That could come back to bite the organization and Preller in a really significant way. And I think it has a little bit. Not a little bit, a lot of it. Like yeah, this season, I'm with you. you have an experienced manager or like you said, you replace the Giants. I'm not saying that they could do that, but – if you had the Giants coaching staff coaching the Padres players, you cannot tell me that that team 
wouldn't be a clear, uh, clearly into the postseason right now. They would. Ma- coaching matters. Being a manager, managing a team, it matters. You don't just have to, you, you can't just put anybody in there and expect to get a World Series. Like a manager is a big component here. As much as people want to try to poo poo it and as much as people want to try to downplay the manager in baseball, just look at what happened. And it's, I know it's just one game, but just look at the 16 inning game against the Dodgers. You and then look at their play. That, yeah. Yeah. And then look at how they played since then. Yeah, where the manager maybe, plays a big role in this thing. Yeah, and from the 16 in a game, you could argue that they lost trust in the coaching staff in that moment. How can you have a situation where your pitcher is hitting against the LA Dodgers in the 11th, 13th, and 15th innings? Right. And the Dodgers still have multiple position players in the 15th and 16th inning available to pinch hit. All right, let's continue this conversation. I don't know if we're going to do it over the weekend or not. Maybe maybe. We'll, maybe we'll do this one time over the weekend. Final home series of the year for the Padres. If not, we'll oh, be back geez. next week again. Subscribe to the wrap up show. Hit that subscribe button. If you like our content, like this video as well. We're on iHeartMedia, uh, the wrap up show. Search for it with John Schaefer and Jim Russell. We're on YouTube. Again, subscribe, hit the like button. For Jim Russell, I'm John Schaefer. We'll see you again soon.